so I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more detailed explanation of like what's kind of been going on with me lately because I know I posted the there is hope video giving like just a general kind of run through but I wanted to kind of give you guys like what actually has been going on Good morning, internet friends. How are we doing today? How are we, guys? We're doing Sassy's coming up the stairs. <gasps> How are we, Sassy? You can do it. Go, puppy, go. Go, puppy, go. Come on, Sassy. You can do it. She's coming up the stairs. She's coming up the stairs. And she's here! Yay! Good morning, Angel! Good morning! MRL, be nice. So, they just came back from being out in the pasture. And I tried to vlog yesterday, and then I got busy and did not completely vlog, so sorry. But I'm back to vlogging. Part two. Yay! Um, so this morning, woke up. Got these three little monsters taken care of. And then I'm pet sitting my aunt's dog, Sasha. So I just went and saw her. And now just kind of chilling. I'm trying to decide what to do today. I know I need to get a shower. Tyler wants to go out and do something. I don't know what. Um, I need to give the dogs baths. And at some point I gotta wash my car. But it looks like it's gonna rain today. So we'll just see about that. Um, but yesterday, I think. Riddler, did you get bit? Did you get bit, buddy? I think you did. That's his sign of I got bit by something. Is when he, his face gets itchy. So, we'll monitor that. And if he needs Benadryl, then I'll be popping some pills in him. Yay. But yeah, yesterday, MRL went to the dog park for the first time. Yay. And it was a lot of fun. Um, there was three other dogs there. Ranging from one month old to a little over a year old. They were all adorable. Emra was the biggest one out of all of them. Um, of course, all the owners loved Emra so much. Loved how soft and fluffy he is. That's a comment I get the most is about how soft he is. I also got a lot of compliments on his collar. Which I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. But he has a whale collar. And it's adorable. Are you sleepy boy? Hi, Riddler. Are you wanting to say good morning? Say good morning to your internet friends. <laughs> they haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Emerald? Yeah? So now, I don't know what I'm going to do today, but we will see. So, so I'm going to tell you guys good morning, and I'm back. Hey, guys. There be doggos. Look how cute they are. And there be my sassers. Sassy. I love you. So, holy crap, Ola. Riddler, holy crap. Stretch it out, buddy. Stretch it out. <laughs> oh, bud. So, I've had a pretty exciting morning slash afternoon, mainly afternoon. And I didn't even leave my house for all this excitement to happen. So, on Instagram, oh dear lord, um, I happened to see a post from somebody that they were talking about this account that was like a fake service dog registry kind of thing that points out fake service dogs or something. So, of course, I was curious and I went and looked. Turns out, they posted pictures also from my good friend Carissa from Slice of Lime. Um, some of you know who she is and know that she's amazing. Um, this account spoke highly of her and Vela and was like, Oh, this is what a real service dog team looks like. And they were like talking crap about anyone with tiny dogs as service dogs, which let me go ahead and tell you, service dogs could be any size. That doesn't matter. Um, 
So, of course, the account got reported. And I was telling people, hey, they stole pictures from my friend and whatever. But then it exploded. People were starting to think that because she was being spoken highly of, that she was the one running the account. So I just spent like the last little while like clearing everything up, being like, no, this is not her at all. She would never do this. Um, luckily, the it was called California Service Dog Registry. Luckily, they are taken down. Yay! And now all that's left is just cleaning up everything else that happened. Um, I have people ask me for clarification, like, do you think your friend would do this? And I'm like, absolutely not. I know she wouldn't. And you guys that know her, you know, you know that she wouldn't. For those of you who don't, she is probably the sweetest woman I have ever met in my entire life. Um, she, of course, is a great service dog mama. Vela is a wonderful dog. Um, she knows the service dogs could come in all shapes and sizes, and it doesn't matter what size your dog is. Like, as long as they're able to help you with your disability, you know, a Chihuahua could totally be a psychiatric service dog. Or, or St. Bernard could. Who knows? It depends on what you need. Um, so, yeah. And she's got chronic dizziness, which is, makes it really hard for her to do a lot of social media stuff. So I was on Instagram, like, advocating, being like, she wouldn't do this, this isn't her, this is what she's really like, this is what the account was actually doing. And this account, it was funny, if anybody called them out, they would block the account. So I was on MRL's account, and his was blocked from this person. Um, but I also did researching through my Pressing the Panic Button account which they did not block. I managed to pull out a wad of hair from my ponytail. <laughs> Hashtag curly hair life. Everything is shedding. What are you doing? Why are you sniffing boxes, buddy? There's nothing in there. But yeah. Um, she's going to be posting on Slice of Lime tomorrow about what happened and her side of everything. And I will definitely be posting a link down below. And I'll be posting a link to my Instagram for the Instagram followers so that Anyone that wants any clarification about what happened, they can know. So, the main take home message I can give is Service Dog Vela slash Slice of Lime is not California Service Dog Registry. Not at all. She would never talk horrible about anybody else's dogs. She is the most wonderful person in the entire world. And trust me, if she was a bad person, I would not be talking as highly of her. Like, I tell you exactly the truth, and you guys know that. So, yeah, that was my afternoon. And now, I'm going out with my brother. I have to go see my aunt's dog. It's a little bit later. It's around 2. I probably should have went earlier, but oh well. And then we're going to go to the grocery store to get some stuff for dinner. And then we're going to wash my car. So, fun times. Oh, and I'm being dangerous. I am wearing shorts with flip-flops so that my tattoo is exposed because i don't know if you guys know my mom doesn't know about this tattoo <laughs> and i want to keep it that way as long as i can especially now because it looks like crap i'm going monday to get it fixed so hooray but yeah that's been the afternoon today hey guys so there's my boys being rotten and stealing more of my bed they were both at the foot of my bed and now they are there there's my sassy girl fast asleep so my evening has mainly consisted of playing dream dad dating simulator which is awesome and facetiming my friend jordan yay i has a text message i will get to that um but yeah um what was i uh, i feel like i was gonna explain oh yeah so I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more detailed explanation of like what's kind of been going on with me lately because I know I posted the there is hope video giving like just a general kind of run through but I wanted to kind of give you guys like what actually has been going on so you guys get a kind of better idea so for the longest time I was having extreme fatigue and dizziness. It was affecting my ability to drive, which sucked. And I was having weight gain and just no fun. 
So I was convinced it was hypothyroidism. My doctor found that my thyroid hormones were low, but she was like, oh, we'll just recheck in three months. Um, and I tried to find a specialist. I was going to get an appointment with an endocrinologist. I had said something to my dad about it when we had lunch. And I guess he told my mom she went on this lecture about how I need to snap out of this funk that I'm in. And she just grabbed at everything. Like saying I need to snap out of this funk I'm in. That she doesn't know what's going on with me. That it could be the fact that I don't have a job yet. That I just graduated and so many changes. But I need to snap out of what's going on with me. And I need to quit researching everything because researching is the reason I'm sick or thinking I'm sick is because I over-research everything. And that I need to quit eating so much processed food and eat healthier and exercise. And oh, you should do that thing that you did last, that one summer because you were so much happier then. You're not as happy now. And just blah, 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 blah. Like, she was just laying it on me. She's one of those, you can't argue back with her at all. So I'm just like, yeah, okay okay I was just pissed I mean she also was like you know I know you can't just snap out of it and you can't pray it away because yeah I know th I watch your videos I know you say that about me and I'm like okay but again she's convinced that I can make my anxiety and depression just magically disappear and I won't live with it for the rest of my life she thinks that I am influenced too much by youtubers that I don't need to be on meds forever and I'm not going to have anxiety forever and I'm just all on my mind besides being super upset because I mean I already feel like my mental illness really isn't that supported at home anyway and her going off on me really wasn't helping. Um, it made me feel like my mental illnesses are even less validated at home because it's like you know anxiety and depression are a real thing. But what I thought was hilarious, my mom has anxiety, and I'm pretty sure OCD. And as I've said in a previous vlog, I learned anxiety is genetic on our side of the family. And of course she let me know that, oh, your grandmother had panic attacks, your other grandmother had panic attacks, blah, 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 they were able to deal with it and you can't deal with it. You need to learn to deal with it. And it's just like, people react differently. You can't expect everybody to be the same. And what's funny, she doesn't know this, or maybe she's just very unaware, but I've had talks with my grandparents, both sets, and I've had talks with like other family members, and they all say that my mom is the most anxious out of everybody, that she is the most neurotic out of everybody. So it's just ironic how she's laying it on me about basically not validating my mental illness at all when she has some issues of her own but yeah so basically in a very toxic situation and that while it did really suck and I was really upset um one thing that did come out of it was I finally realized maybe this isn't hypothyroidism I'm dealing with maybe it's just depression because I mean most of the symptoms I've had like increased appetite loss of energy, loss of interest in things I like. They're all classic signs of depression. So maybe it was my major depressive disorder acting up as a result of like so many changes that have gone on since I graduated college. Because let me tell you guys, if you don't already, if you've not experienced this yet, like as someone who just recently graduated from college and is trying to find a job, and basically find your way into the adult world that's hard enough add mental illness on top of that and you've got a recipe for disaster um because i mean it's one of those where still within the toxic environment that i'm in that no matter what i do no matter how hard i try i try and i try and i push and i push and i push it's not enough i have figured that out now because, I mean, I've applied for so many jobs, it's ridiculous. Um, but I need to apply for more. And the ones I have applied to, apparently I'm not doing enough for those. Um, it's funny, the other day she even said something about, like, this one big job opportunity that I'm waiting to hear from 
and hopefully that will go well. But during her lecture rant thing, she's like, oh, you need to go to Kroger and apply for jobs. You need to actually go out to places and apply for jobs, to which I'm like, everybody does applications online. That's just how this generation works. That is how this time works. Um, it's basically a lot of, I do everything I can to please, you know, the people I live with. I don't want to be very specific, but I try to please everybody. And apparently anything I do is not enough, which is extremely annoying. And I know some of you guys understand that. Like, you feel like you have to please everybody because you live with them. But just nothing is right. And my mind is still recovering from what she had said. Um, do I still have anxiety and depression? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Look. Emerald, you were dreaming, honey. You were dreaming. I dropped the camera on you. I'm sorry. You were dreaming, sweetie pie. I love you so much. You guys are going to have to move, though, and get off my bed eventually. Meanies. Yeah, I'm talking about you. But, yeah, um, all that to say that, you know, I still deal with anxiety and depression. Duh. Um, Riddler was breathing funny. Like, chemicals in my brain are still imbalanced, but I am trying really hard to, um, get things straightened out. I'm considering making an appointment with my old therapist, Dr. Bogus. So, yay. Um, and I may be, I need to find a new psychiatrist. And one of my friends suggested one that her brother goes to. Because she was thinking maybe you need a medication adjustment. Which is true. I've not had my meds adjusted in a long time. And maybe that's why my moods have been harder to control. Um, so we'll see about that. And then I'm just like, how to get away with this without my mom getting pissed. Because since she thinks that I'm making myself sick by over-researching everything, and she's convinced I need to detox off my meds, which I don't want to. I want to detox off of them when a doctor says, and not because my mother wants me to. Because apparently, what I think for my own body and my own mind doesn't matter. But I think a lot of you... Thumbs up if you guys feel me. If you guys understand this kind of situation. No matter how it is. Like it might be for you being chronically ill. It could be just not even for any kind of illness. Just you have family that does not understand. So yeah. All that to say that's why I took a week off of vlogging. Because I had all of that crap going on. And after that kind of lecture rant with my mom. It gave me more like inspiration to come back to vlogging. To be like you know. A bunch of crap is going on right now in life but I'm still pushing forward because that's all you can really do you can't go back you can only go forward because I mean if we could all go back we'd probably all be toddlers again <laughs> but yeah so that was why I had a break and I promised I'm gonna be back to regular vlogging so hooray um but now I'm going to sign off for the night and head off to bed so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've had a wonderful day or night, rain or shine, whatever the world has for you today. Question of the day is, how do you take care of yourself when you're in such a toxic situation? Like if you live with toxic people or if there's a situation you're in that's really bad, how do you deal with that? For me, I just focus on the things that matter the most to me. Dogs, of course, being one of them and my friends being another. Put your answers down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Good night, Mr. Emerald. Good night, Miss Sassy Girl. And good night, Mr. Red.